Hey, travelers, back again. Troy came out from under the bridge. Hey, guys, welcome back. Work yeah. was work was intense there for a little while. Needed uh, needed a few minutes. Who needs work? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I flew in from Florida. Yeah, just for this. I, my <laughs> arms are tired. <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, oh uh, man. I wish somebody could stab Ooh. you right now. <laughs> glad to be here. Oh, we're glad to have you. you you'll notice Jake is tan and. Troy and I are still pale because we haven't less left Wisconsin in months. We got a Wisconsin tan. <laughs> got a real a little Wisconsin, porcelain. Yeah. Wisconsin winter tan. Uh, well, if you do like I did and you're from Wisconsin, you go there and you just get super sunburned on yeah. day one. Yeah. You're just like as red as a lobster. And then like a couple weeks later, you're kind of tan. That's great. Yeah. That's yeah. the plan. That's heck of a strategy, man. Yeah. <laughs> I call that the, the bacon boil or something like that or the bacon peel. Boil and peel. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah. I'm so, uh, how was how was the beer in Florida? Tell us about that. Uh, it was very light for my liking. Uh, there's a lot of IPAs. There's a lot of. I suspect that uh, pale Russian ales. imperial stouts aren't wide selling beers on the beach. Not no, really thing. I I still wanted one. They didn't have them. Um, I I had one stout at the hotel that I liked that was about ten dollars a glass. So I had about two of those spread Ooh, out over the week. It's a pricey hotel. Yeah, it was a nice one. Um. And I had a lot of Pilsners, and I had some Summer Shandy, which uh-huh. the people oh, yeah. there, they, they love themselves some shum, Summer Shandy. You bet. They, Keeping yeah. Wine Kugels in business, man. Yeah, they were. I said, what do you got? And they go, let me tell you about this one. And I go, I live there. And they go, what? <laughs> <laughs> I go, yeah. It's, I was do in, I get this for free now? <laughs> I was in St. Martin, and they were selling the crap out of Winey Summer Shandy. Yeah. It's like, wow, well, wasn't expecting to see this down here. I yeah. was in Alaska, and they had Summer Shandy. Dude. So. It's it, is, it is everywhere, man. That's one heck of a distribution yeah. network. Yingling also very prevalent there. Oh yeah, and I, I think I, you said there's a heavy East Coast presence. Oh there. yeah, man. So it's, it's, they're it's they're targeting East Co- the East Coast South. Yeah, right. So it's a lot of East Coast uh, breweries. Get representation down there, man. Yeah. Not a whole lot of need for Midwesty breweries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our people go to Arizona. Yeah, yeah, you get a whole different ball game out there. Oh, I'm sure I suspect so. I was there a couple of years ago, but not a lot of dark beers there either. So maybe huh. I just got to stay up here where it's cold. I guess. Well, or... I pulled out some dark beers for you tonight. So thanks. So Appreciate since that. you were you I'm, went through a drought, I'm going through withdrawals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Robin brought us back uh, a rogue beer. Ooh. Yeah. Robin said she needed it needed an adult while she was out there. She she brought a lot of beer back and mm. uh, she gave us some. So. That was very nice. Thank you again, Robin. We appreciate. I'm glad she it. made it there and back. Yeah, right. A Robin yeah. tale before the next uh, bomb a cyclone Robin comes tale. through. Yeah, right. So yeah. So uh, we can bust into that one. I can't reach it, but it's Jake, got, it's got like a, it's got like a candy honors, bar, Jake. candy bar uh, on it. And uh, I think it's got like hazelnuts and stuff. Rogue makes. I, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, they own their own hazelnut farm. Oh, and I believe it's all like either organic or somewhere near organically produced hazelnut. Thanks, Jake. So if you ever see Rogue Hazelnut Brown, there's a lot of work that goes into that beer, and this kind of seems like a riff on that particular uh, beer. There is a hazelnut brown is probably one of my favorite beers. Like I said last week, I have yet to have anything from Rogue that I I don't like. Yeah. So th- this is called Hazelutely yeah. Ch- ah. Chocotabulous or something like that. Yeah. Choc Choctabulous. Choctabulous. Candy bar in a bottle, it says. So it's a good thing Robin gave me this because um Andy's allergic to nuts. So oh, yeah, this would this happen. would literally kill Andy. Yeah, he'd die instantly. On the nose, I just get a little sweet hints. I don't get a ton. But in the mouth, you get a ton of that, that little is, chocolate body, which is, is like, nice. a, like a hazelnut. Rogue is probably the best hazelnut brewery in the country, which is a weird distinction, but nonetheless, one they deserved and earned. Yeah. yeah. Every beer they ever made, ever made with hazelnut. Probably well known for their uh, rogue dead guy, like their mm-hmm. most right. popular beer, the dead guy. One of my favorite uh, kind of early craft beers. I drank me some decent amount of dead guy back in the day. You know, there was a time where we could buy rogue dead guy growlers in the store here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They yeah. shipped them all the way out here. There was a, I think it comes in cans now, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. There's, well, you know, a lot of people are going to cans and that's, mm. you know, it's easy to recycle and cheaper than, uh, than glass. So, um, yeah, pour a little more of that. 
Yeah, I wanted. I wanted to get your take, Troy. So you probably noticed that we have some irregular glassware out here. Oh yeah, tonight. for sure. Um, I've been noticing a lot. What I would call ridiculous glassware for beer. Oh yeah, like uh, like the bowl. Have you seen that? I don't think I've seen the bowl. A glass bowl. That's wow. been that's been going on a lot lately. It's like a fish bowl. It's like with beer. You know. And I've got a pretty decent sized hand. Yeah, yeah. It's about my hand size, um, big glass bowl that that they're serving beer out of. Yeah, is there is there a, a claimed attribute to said? Bowl? You know, I haven't found one yet. Yeah. Uh, other than that, it looks stupid. Mm-hmm. Are people sharing these bowls? You know, I I don't think so. Is it a communal bowl? So it's no, just it's, for like super alcoholics that want to just drink maybe a bowl or of beer just of just to look stupid. Pint. You know, to when go like that. Like, Oh, yeah, yeah. No, well, yeah. Maybe that's the easy way of Tim, cutting somebody off. But. I would say the bowl doesn't sound like a good idea. I mean, because I guess you're warming up your beer faster because the more surface contact with your hand you have, right? So I guess I could be warming up your beer faster, which necessarily ain't a bad thing. Because it's mostly hazy beers that I'm seeing in these bowls. These are, so these you can are not, see all these the are not crud? like these are not like these kind of beers that I'm seeing. Oh okay, yeah, like a hazy. I don't know, but still, you would warm it up faster. So I mean, that means it might open up more flavor. Sure. You want the beer I gets guess. warmer. It's just a quicker way to do that. Yeah. You know, because a lot of times they give you a stem, it's so you don't have to touch the bowl and it keeps your beer colder. That's like the number one attribute of a stem. Yeah. Even in the glasses we have here, like this one is a little wider, so you can get more bigger effervescent bubbles versus one you have, Landon, which is meant for tighter, more uh, like champagne bubbles. Okay. Jake, there's Jake, just a. More like a lager. German, German style. Just German, German, I need more beer. You're going for volume. <laughs> Yeah, you know the bigger the Stein, the more uh, the more demons you're chasing away, I guess. Or the good of a day you just had. Well, you know Germans have a lot of demons. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> yeah, they did really like David Hasselhoff. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's tough to shake that one. <laughs> it's the biggest fault in their history as a country. That only yeah. that yeah. and that one thing. That, that and that other thing. No, that's right. <laughs> Whatever that was. But uh, no, seriously, <laughs> uh, I don't know why you'd use a bowl. Yeah. I mean, the, I remember used to go into this Belgian bar in Pittsburgh that uh, every Belgian beer was served in a wacky glass because, like, these monks decided like 300 years ago or whatever that these glasses had to be shaped these weird ways. I'm worried that I'm going to start showing up to places and I'm going to get beer in a pot. <laughs> or, uh, I mean, you know, pots of beer, man. Yeah. That's a thing. Well, it's got a handle. If it's it came with a jug just, and you can just. It's got a handle, it's just on the side. Oh, yeah. You know? You could have a Stein. Yeah. I, I I don't know. What what will we get next? When's the last time you've been to a bar and they served you a beer in a stein? Like with a little lid on it? Never. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I feel like that's a right for a comeback. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know the yeah, logistics we have of that. steins, but Or just I don't know if it'd even be a comeback. It just nobody's done it to my knowledge. Well, I mean modern day. No one's done it since like the seventeenth century. That's right. gotta be hell to clean though. I, I think that's probably more why we haven't yeah. seen it because haven't seen a good old Stein cleaning lately. is probably not the greatest. Uh, uh, yeah. But uh anyway. What's yeah. our next beer landed? Uh this next beer I'm not entirely sure how it got in my fridge. Ah, I love those beers. Yeah, right. People come for a party, uh, they bring a beer. It's from Adroid Theory. It's called The Devil Made Me. Oh. Uh, wow. It's a uh, red wine finished rye whiskey barrel aged porter <laughs> with smoked Serrano peppers. What it's got sh- everything in it. I feel like half the beers you bring on this show are just like, there's you no like other, t- <laughs> they're just word soup. Uh, Alex yeah. Watson. Right? I feel like you're word soup. You know you. what? You know what I feel though? If you read it nicely, it sounds, yeah, I'll drink yeah. that. I mean, you had, <laughs> we should probably go flavor by flavor and see if we can't like, Find all of them. We'll see. We'll see how many we can uh, we can figure out. You know, you know I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put this in my fancy glass. No, I'll, I'll take a fancy glass pour. Yeah, I'll do fancy glass. I'm so fancy. I'll pour yours since you got to hold your mic. Oh, thank you. I think you're using both hands to pour. It's right, def- it's definitely not low and brow. <laughs> it's definitely not a low and brow type beer. A little bit darker, yeah. I don't know the lone rye. I can is. smell. I can smell. You know the rye. Oh, better pour Alex. Uh, I forgot about Alex. Yeah, he's he's pining for a beer over there. <laughs> as soon as I read the bottle, he get, he instantly got up and went and got a glass. So I figured he was probably <laughs> wanting some. So, 
Don't drop it. <coughs> Let's so, hear. um, Adroid Theory. Uh, Where are they at? Uh, I think I get a little of the Serrano in the nose. Uh, Virginia. There you go. Yeah, nice. Go Cavaliers. They're playing, I think, right now. Yeah. For the title. Yeah. Tony yeah. Bennett, Troy, Wisconsin. Troy has no idea what title. We have a World Series going on, eh? <laughs> yeah. They're in the World Series. Uh, they just kicked a field goal. Yeah. <laughs> Took the lead. Maybe. I get, I get a little bit of the, the whiskey, you know, on the nose. Oh, that's basketball. Cavaliers, right? It's a college team. Wow, Troy. But, yes. Oh, yeah, the end of that. Yeah. Woo! A little bite on there there's in the, the end. There's the Serrano. There's that Sriracha, <laughs> yeah. Serrano. Oh, Serrano peppers. Ooh, yeah, right there. That, I don't even know where to begin with this beer. That lingers. At, uh, it, it starts with that real rye. Nothing but rye whiskey in the beginning and nothing but Serrano peppers on the finish. It is all rye in the beginning and totally Serrano. <laughs> this is Serrano a teeter-totter of flavor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a, a teeter totter of what's going on, people. Woo! I didn't get a lot of red wine. Yeah, I don't know if I, I can, don't get any red <laughs> wine. I'll have to dig for that one a little bit. I think the Serrano's pretty much canceled that out. Let me yeah. warm it up. Maybe yeah, we'll come out with the flavor. Yeah, we'll warm that one up. But in the if meantime, only we had a bowl. If we only had a bowl to warm it up. I'm <laughs> sorry. I don't have any uh, beer, beer bowls. bowls. <laughs> I'll get some. As soon as breweries start selling their beer bowls, I'll buy one. Let's put it in a soup bowl. I could put it in a soup bowl. It doesn't look as good. It's is there not like made a of, mason jar equivalent not of a made soup of glass, bowl? Of bowls? So. Is that a soup bowl? Um, so we've I think we've had some beers from Avery on here before, right? Avery, I believe so. Okay. So I pulled this uh, from the takeout.com. Mm. Uh, they're mostly about food, but they do have some beer news. Uh, so apparently Avery, and, and we all know Avery, they are... Um, they're combining or they're being bought by a Spanish beer company. San Miguel? Yeah, San yeah. Miguel. San Miguel so you knew also this. owns 30% of Founders. Founders, yes. Yeah. Hmm. Ironically, we can't get San Miguel here, though. How about that? You think if a brewery would have that distribution network, they would want Well, it. so what they were, you know, they started off with that, and then they kind of went down to Ninkasi. <laughs> um, they're, they're, uh, they're getting a new majority owner. So apparently all these, and Ninkasi is not exactly that small. I mean, they're decent sized. A lot of these craft breweries are combining with each other to start these groups to start buying smaller breweries. I think that's uh, part of almost any business cycle, isn't it, though? You get a, you get a, a boom and then a consolidation and... Well, and, and it's probably somewhat to fight Anheuser from yeah. you know buying pulling buying up resources, some of them. right? And, you know, right, grain buying, yeah. Because you get a like a, uh, Canarchy owns three different breweries, like Oscar Blues and um, uh, <clears throat> Squatters and Cigar City. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So had plenty of that. <laughs> a little highlight. Did not have highlight. I've had that before, and I. Mm-hmm. That was good with that. That was is that legacy? You said that was leg oh no, canarchy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get several of these and it's like any like I said, any business or industry consolidation. Squatters and Wasatch. You know, and Anheuser's trying to buy the ones they can buy. Yeah, so it's an interesting time in the craft beer world. You know, you're you're seeing uh, after thirty years which business models are making it, which ones aren't. Right. People who have staying power and other ones who don't. You know, and also hyper local smaller craft breweries keep opening and yeah, everyone's just trying to stay competitive. <laughs> and I, I even noticed last weekend, so if you didn't know, this, and this is the last time I'll talk about the bus trip, I swear. Um, <laughs> maybe the last time you'll talk about it. Well, maybe somebody else will. So we have a bus trip April 13th. Buy tickets. We have some seats. Um, and you can find the link below. Or above. Or above. Or yeah, below. I think it's below. Anyway, so uh, I decided to go over to the cities, and we've all had – you know, beers from Boom Island and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and all that stuff before. But when you go into their tap room, especially, you know, all of them, it, it doesn't matter. It's not just Boom Island. It's it's all of these places. That's where you can get some of the craziest beers. And I, and I would argue some of the best beers that they have. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's rare, always, rare beers. Yeah. That's always uh, the, the perk of going to the brewery, you know. And right. Finnegan's, you know, a lot of the stuff that we get in cans here, you yeah. go, yeah, you know, that's a good mm, beer. It's solid, yeah. But when you go to their place, oh, my God. Did you get the Hotel Normandy across the street? Yeah. Did that make you happy? Yeah, it was great. 
Weird hotel. We, we put it on the Facebook Live video too. Yeah, that was good. <coughs> I'm dying here. Got a nice, got a nice shot of the hotel. Normal. Ah, love that hotel. Good camera and work, and it's straight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, that was Beth. That was Beth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Straight across the street, you can't miss it. The Hotel Normandy, so good stuff. Yeah, oh, well, outside of that, though, I'd say this beer is definitely worth a a drink because of the complexity of it. But at the end of the day, there is a lot going on. That in is it. that is what I would call a uh, a one glasser. Maybe is, yeah. maybe if you have someone to to split it with. Even splitting that. I would say if you're a fan of pepper beers or peppery yeah. beers, there's those folks out there. Yeah, yeah. That this is probably a must try for. Yeah, you. definitely. It is. It is a good beer. If you're if it you're a connoisseur well. of pepper beers, this one's, I would say, by my palate, well done. I've had a lot of bad ones in my day. Yes. I think we all have. Every craft beer drinker has tried. I've bruise. actually, I've got some bad pepper beers in my fridge right now. Ooh. And I'm not going to tell you who they're from. Dig them up, but, them the raccoons. But they're going to, no, they're, they're good for cooking. Oh, yeah, a little mm. spice? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. I usually put them in my chili. Well, that's actually a great idea. Yeah. Mm. yeah goes, I now know what I want to do with a pepper beer. Yeah, there you go. Oh. I've probably got a can or two you can have. Uh, so this last one, it's a, it's a two-year-old Vanilla Rose Porter from Pitchfork Brewing. We haven't oh, had anything from Pitchfork in a while. Oh, uh, the mics. By the way, they're moving into, into a new place. Oh, so, yeah, for uh, sure. I I've, I would go and see their, their neat little place right now if I were you. If you've Soak it up while Pitchfork. you can. They're, yeah. they're very little intimate brewery and... Before they move into their new place, Pitchfork has continuously been a fun little brewery to visit over the years. I think we all find ourselves continuously going back there and just just enjoy them, Mike and Mike. You know, mm-hmm. good folk. Mike and Mike, good folk. I like Patty Ryan's. If you need food mm-hmm. yeah. next door, right off the interstate. So yes, this is a two-year-old Vanilla Rose Porter that I've been aging for a while. I don't think you taste anything after that last one. Ooh, I like how that mellowed out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but sometimes the vanilla roses come off the press a little hot. Yeah, yeah. And that's that was the last one that I had. I mistakenly opened it. And not to say that it's a mistake if you open it, but for me, it was a mistake to open it right away because I like when beers mellow out a little bit and they're not so hot. Oh, that's actually just feeling nice after that last Yeah, beer. compared so, to the last yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to give this. <laughs> that I, whiskey's really cooling off my palate. <laughs> that vanilla landed. <laughs> I feel bad to say this to Mike, but Mike, I can't give you an honest assessment of this beer. I can just tell you it's refreshing. <laughs> it is. It's quite After refreshing. the Serrano. A little sweet. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. You, get, you get a little bit of that Four Roses uh, whiskey oh, in there. He's got a nice mouthfeel to this beer, too. Yeah. It's uh, kind of some softer, uh, bigger bubbles. They yeah. almost kind of help play into that mellowness a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, my palate's fried after the last one. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Why well, yeah. we have this? You know, Vanilla Rose is a good chaser to the. <laughs> <laughs> whoever whoever would have thought Vanilla Rose was a chaser. Mike, I'm huh? sorry, yeah. man, but you made a hell of a chaser here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would recommend this with any sp- spicy Bloody Mary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll taste the beer more than you will the Bloody Mary. Um, uh, anyway, so that about wraps it up for us uh, this week. Remember, buy some bus tickets. Buy some, buy some bus tickets. Come and hang out, drink on the bus. Uh, It's a good time. It's always just a bunch of beer nerds driving around, trying some beers. We're doing a taste of the world. Yeah, have some, some, have some pizza. We have some pizza. Mm. We're gonna go to a Belgian bar and a German, Irish, and Mexican, uh, Mexican. So that's kind of a nice little trip, if you will. Yeah. And so. as always, uh, subscribe if you haven't already done that. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and whatever else Alex has for us. Oh, yes. Our Toplin <laughs> Goliath episode is live on YouTube now. Oh, beautifully uh, done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. I was actually... It was a fun place to go to. It was fun to re-listen to the interview with, uh, what's his face, the head brewer? Mike. Mike. Yeah. Super knowledgeable guy. He just knew so much and You know what? Hops. It was It was probably the, the toughest job to cut it down because yeah. he had so much good he stuff to say. He had like a say. textbook he, and yeah. like hop. It was fantastic. At least for us. So anyway, yeah. check that out on YouTube and then always uh, click the bell and... That way you get notified when when we put new videos up. So until next week, we'll see ya. Prost. Cheers. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.